Hey everyone, today we're doing something really different. Instead of touring, what I usually do, uh, we're talking. We're talking about the business strategies that can help you on your farm and the insight comes from the fact that in the last two weeks uh, with the Market Gardener Institute, we were in a crop planning uh, challenge and so I've been talking with a lot of growers about their crop plan, about their game plan and I just realized talking with all these growers that there's a lot of things that I take for granted that aren't so obvious to others and so today I want to share some of these insights and you know it's a great moment to be thinking about farming to be preparing for next year you know we're not executing anymore we're kind of resting but planning is a big part of the success on a farm so let's just jump right into it and the number one is as a grower you should know uh, what are your top five best sellers you should know that uh, top five best sellers is the one that generates the most income it's probably the one that these are the crops that are the most popular that are the most lucrative per square foot uh, in space and time but that that you sell the most of and these crops you should be able to identify which one with data you should know number one is greenhouse tomato number two is you know cucumbers that you sell throughout the season because they're in a greenhouse you know salad mix huckerai turnip bell peppers whatever you should have a very clear insight on which your top five are and you should also know which are your kind of top ish top five ish that you sell the less of this is information that you need to have to do proper crop planning for your next season and these top five best sellers uh, you know ask any smart uh, grower out there they'll tell you the same these your top sellers they need to be top price they need they need to be borderline too pricey because you'll sell them anyway and then you can have bargain prices on the other veggies so make sure that these are at high high ceiling price and make sure that you have always enough of these ones you don't you want to focus on these crops make sure that these are always there and these you know this is your rep this is who you are it's your brand it's, it's you know these, these crops really are where your focus uh, should be next season the other thing that we do every year is to reevaluate all our sales channels let's say you're you're doing two farmers market you have one csa you perhaps have a route for uh different chefs whatever you're selling to one two three four five grocery stores whatever it is make sure that you think about is it optimal uh should i be kind of streamlining my routes because there's a lot of time that we spend moving around going from one sale channel to the other move going from one restaurant one drop off so if you could streamline all your sales in less uh point of contacts or if you could have just like four deliveries instead of six that's a great way to just get leaner and then get more efficient with your time and the way to evaluate which one you should be kind of perhaps dropping is which one generates the most revenue who among the chefs that you sell to buy the most from you these are the ones that you need to focus on uh, and you know it's the same with markets if a market is generating more than the other uh, this is the one that you should be targeting it's, it's 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 really about sales and that's something that talking with a lot of growers i realize that they're for different reasons either emotionally attached because they know the clients or you know they have this mindset that they should be everywhere at once you need to streamline your harvest it should be twice a week max they should be condensed harvesting session and you should have two or three times max that the delivery truck leaves the farm and when the truck leaves the farm it should be filled that should be kind of your mindset going into next season by the way if this is interesting to you i'll be giving a workshop on the art of profitable agriculture it's free it's online it's on january 16th all the information to register is on the link below so you can check that out it's going to be epic i'm excited about it i'll see you there and now just back to what we were talking about the other thing that we do every year that is really helpful 
is that, you know, we look at sales and that's great and that's important, but we also need to look at expense because, you know, the bottom line is, you know, sales minus expenses and that gives you your income at the end. And your expenses, uh, you can have control over some of them. So identifying uh, your five top, you know, the five biggest expenses that you have in a year. Uh, just like identifying those and being aware that your, your number one is salary, your number two is seeds, your number three is, I don't know, you know, uh, diesel for your delivery truck, whatever it is, n n know it. And, and that's the first part and know, measure it and know it or know it and measure it. They work together because what's not measured can't be managed. But just like having those in mind and then look at how you could perhaps diminish these. It could be, you know, improve your wash pack area so you need less employee time to wash your vegetables. You know, it could be, you know, again, streamlining your route so that you're less, you're spending less time moving, you know, crops around on the road. It could be using landscape fabric to cut a lot of weeding time out of the, out of the, out of the year, out of the week. You know, there's all sorts of strategies that you can put into play, but you know, it, this is the time to think about this and to implement strategies. So looking at your cost, making sure that you know your costs and having at least a couple strategies to help tackle them down. The other thing that I really noticed uh, talking with different growers is that not everyone is organized with references like uh, seeding charts or transplant charts or, you know, let's say you're using the Jang seeder, which roller, um, you know, for which crop, the spacing for each crop. Having all of this really clear and obvious to everyone that's on the farm so that in the end, uh, everyone's following the same you know, operating procedures. And you know, in my opinion, you want to standardize those as much as possible, standardizing your operating procedures, but at least have the tools and the visuals so that everyone, everyone knows where the tools go in the tool shed, because there's a picture of all the tools neatly stored. And you have an inventory sheet for you know, your trays so that you can always know where you're at if you need to buy them. So just making sure that you have a readable reference for everything that needs to happen on the farm. Uh, and, and that, only you can do that because it's your farm. But the way you want to be thinking about this is like, let's say you're not there for an extended period of time. Can everyone manage and run the farm? Is everything clear with everyone? So you need to take the time to write those downs, to have your, your procedures, where things are going, what happens at market. And when you do that, the beauty of this is that you'll be thinking about how to improve it at the same time. And then this summer uh, is gonna be a great time to implement some of these thoughts that you've had thinking about this right now. And the last one uh, is, is really important because you know, uh, you work really hard to grow your veggies and to sell them and you want to make sure that you're pricing them appropriately. And so reviewing your price list, making sure that you're not too cheap, that you're on the upper echelon of the price game. Uh, and it's not about being, you know, it's, it's, it's not about being elitist. It's just about making sure that you're getting the reward of all the effort that you're putting into your project. So just reviewing your price list, make sure that again, you're five, uh, you know, top sellers have a good price. I think that's also important. You want to start your next season with a price list that's really reviewed and foolproof going into next season. So these are all things that, uh, you know, I'm thinking about for next season here at the Old Mill. Uh, currently what we're doing is I'm reviewing all of our sales at the restaurant, weekly sales. I have access to everything that the chef has ordered and bought from me and from other growers. And I'm trying to see which crops he orders the most and which crops I can do that will bring more money for me. And that these are the crops that I'll be prioritizing in the garden and also in the winter greenhouse. I'm also revisiting my tool shed, making sure that it's very obvious where everything is going so that when I have 
you know, uh, uh, interns coming in, you know, it, everything's familiar to them. But I would say that my biggest project is I'm hiring a farm manager for next year. So I have so many other projects. I wanted to have one person dedicated exclusively to the farm here at the Old Mill. So I'm doing exactly what I was, you know, I'm describing in this video with her. And I'm working on my SOPs, making sure that she'll understand everything, how we do things here. And uh, it's, it's great. It's a great moment to do this because I have more time. And I hope you do have more time also. It's a, winter's a great time to re, uh, recharge, uh, to learn. You know, our biggest money making crop is greenhouse tomatoes. You can check out this video about how we do it. That's a great time to learn about this. Otherwise, I hope you guys are well. Christmas is right around the corner. I hope you'll enjoy your holidays. If anything, I'll see you next time. JM out.